here's your host, Woody Durham. This coming fall and winter will mark my 39th season trying to describe Carolina football and basketball, but fencing coach Ron Miller is four years up on me, and I might add, well ahead of everybody else in the athletic department. Ron Miller is this week's special guest. What if I told you in 1967 when you came to Carolina as a phys ed instructor that 43 years later, with over 1,200 victories, you'd still like doing what you're doing? I think I would have said uh, that's what I was looking forward to. Um, I've always wanted to be here. Uh, our teams and programs have always uh, been exactly what I would like in terms of their intensity, their love for the sport, their love for the university. Um, where else could I want to be? understand. You'll hear more from fencing coach Ron Miller in just a moment. Ron, in 42 years, your men have won 70% of more than 900 matches, and in 38 years, your women have claimed victories in 67% of nearly 840 matches. Amazingly enough, there have been only three losing seasons for each group. How has a non-scholarship sport been so successful? If you just go on our campus and you walk around, or if you watch physical education classes or intramurals, you'll see that our campus is gifted with a high number of, shall we say, excellent athletes. My job is a salesperson. I've got to find those athletes on campus and convince them that fencing is what they should want to do. How many come to you with already an interest in fencing? Not that many knew about fencing before they came. In other words, our walk-on base is usually uh, word of mouth or signs or people telling them that uh, it's something they should want to do. Mike Krzyzewski won his 700th game. NC State's Kay Yao won her 600th game at NC State. Well, North Carolina has a coach in another sport with more than 1,000 wins. Ken Medlin tells us about Ron Miller, the Tar Heel fencing coach for more than 30 years. As the fencing coach at UNC, Ron Miller often flies under the radar, but his record tells him a different story. Miller chalked up his 1,000th career win this year. That's 1,000 wins with teams almost exclusively made up of walk-ons, and not just any walk-ons either. About 80 to 85 percent every year I had never fenced before college. That's right. Ron Miller takes students who've never fenced before and turns them into winners year in and year out. Great athletes on this campus. You just got to find the right ones, get them started into something that hopefully they'll love. Travis Wary is one of those athletes. A road that began with a phys ed class in fencing has now taken him to a varsity starting role. Coach is just one of those people that has just the unique ability to teach and to make you want to learn. I think Coach has the right personality for it. You know, he knows how to treat people and he knows how to work with people. Um, he's fa fantastic technically. You know, he'll tell you what to fix and how to fix it and work with you to fix it. The student body is my first love. Um, I've never seen students at other schools that are as open-minded. Um, that are willing to try new things, that believe in fair play, that come from the type of backgrounds where they're, um, I guess, just special people. Why leave if you've got the best right here? 38 years and 1,000 wins at UNC back up that claim. Ken Medlin, WRL Sports, Chapel Hill. Fencing is indeed recognized as one of Carolina's 28 varsity sports, but no longer recognized by the Atlantic Coast Conference. Ron, how many fencing programs do exist in the ACC? Well, almost all the schools have either a varsity or a club program. Uh, the varsity programs only are really Carolina, Duke, and Boston College. Uh, the rest of the schools do have club programs and compete at club nationals, but not varsity. We talked a moment ago about the fact that it is a non-scholarship program. You're fortunate to get some young people into school in mm -hmm. order to compete as uh, fencers and so forth. What about budget restrictions what are you what can you do and what can't you do I don't think it's a matter of ever what we can or can't do um, athletics has always supported us the same as every other sport um, obviously our schedule is strong we get a chance to travel a great deal um, and that's really a blessing because not many stronger programs want to come this far south um, so we've always had what we needed uh, to get the job done we're going to talk about so many facets of Carolina fencing as our week continues. Veteran fencing coach Ron Miller is this week's special guest. Unfortunately, Stanford again ran away with another Director's Cup, which is now sponsored by Learfield Sports, the parent company of Tar Heel Sports Properties. But as usual, Carolina, which won the very first cup 16 years ago, made a strong showing. And Coach Miller, your fencers accounted for 30 of those points. 
I mean, obviously, one of the things we try to do is to uh, contribute as much as we can every year. Um, we did have great seasons, especially for the men. Um, but um, obviously, the way we contribute is great. It sure is. There will be more from Coach Miller when we continue. The Tar Heels finished just outside the nation's top ten in the final fencing polls of the season, but both groups did place in the national rankings. Coach, how about the performance of the men who posted a 28-8 and eight record in dual meets and won the Mid-Atlantic Championship? Mm -hmm. I think the main thing about this season um, is that we had a lot of experience. We had great leadership. Um, the kids worked very hard from the beginning of the season to the end, and we were consistent. Um, many of, this, of the teams that we compete against are among the nation's top. Uh, for instance, we fenced Penn State twice. We fenced Princeton twice. A lot of the better competition mm -hmm. uh, we get all the time. And fencing that strong competition makes us stronger. Coach, I think this was the second year, was it not, for the Mid-Atlantic membership? Uh, mid yeah, it's, it's uh, the MACFA, which is Mid-Atlantic Fencing Association and Collegiate Fencing Association. Um, it's an interesting conference. We mainly um, participate so that we get a, a strong postseason competition. Uh, but there are 18 teams, uh, nine are varsity and uh, nine are club teams. And many of those are ACC or former ACC varsities. <laughs> We talked about the men winning the Mid-Atlantic Championship before our break. The Carolina women did not have a conference tournament, but coached 17 and 10 in dual meets. Uh, actually, simply an amazing year. Um, we had a great deal of turnover on the, on the team this year. At the beginning of the season, we had a couple of girls, either that went abroad or went inactive, um, that were strong starters that we were expecting back. And then we also had a number of unusual family situations and injuries um, to some of our top athletes. So we had a lot of walk-ons move from, um, it, it's sort of a transition from being uh, the, the um, alternates on our team to becoming starters. In fact, two of them that started at the end of the year were first year athletes. I think you told me earlier, you started what, one walk-on early in the year and That's at the correct. end you were using five in your lineup? That's correct. Um, and really a tribute to the entire team because in order to get those walk-ons ready, the more experienced girls had to work extra hard. I'm visiting this week with Ron Miller, who's looking forward to his 43rd season as the fencing coach at Carolina. Coach, a year ago, both your men and women won nearly 30 dual meets. So you had 27 seniors and juniors, according to my count, among the 45 players listed on your roster. What were your personal expectations for Carolina fencing this past year? Um, it looked like it was going to be one of our very best, if not our best season. Uh, we had strong competition scheduled. Um, and obviously the, with that amount of experience, we should have done very well. Um, as we talked about yesterday, the wins and, and losses for the women's team were a little bit disappointing, but only because of injuries and illness. Um, the men certainly performed where they should have. Um, it, was, it was a good year, could have been a little bit better, but we're still very excited about it. We'll be back with more after this local timeout. Over the last three years alone, Carolina had qualified 14 different fencers for the Nationals. So, Coach, based on your season, how disappointing was it to get only two into the NCAA championships this past season? It really was a disappointment. We had a number of athletes that we felt uh, would qualify going into regionals. Um, the regional championships this year simply uh, was difficult for us. Um, part of that has to do with seeding, um, and unfortunately, the way the seeding formulas worked, it was to our disadvantage this year. And you had 22 fencers, according to my count, 11 men, 11 women in the region. That's correct. Um, 24 is the maximum you can qualify, so we only had two short of that. Uh, and that's one of the goals that we always have every year. We did have two weapons. In fact, women's saber uh, qualified five. Um, four usually is the, is the amount you would go for. Uh, and yet no one qualified out of that five to the postseason. And that's our strongest, really, men and women's saber are our strongest two weapons. Charlotte senior Bobby Zeekman competed in his fourth straight NCAA championship while younger brother Kevin, only a sophomore, made it into his second national championship. Coach, how'd they both do in the men's saber? They both did really, really well. Uh, Bobby missed uh, All-American by one position, so he was 13th, the top 12 uh, make All-American. Yeah. Um, but he fenced very well and very consistently throughout the day, uh, actually throughout the two days of competition. Um, his brother was a little more up and down, uh, but still finished very well and better than he did the previous year. When you got Bobby, did you know that you were going to get uh, his brother? <laughs> um, we didn't for sure. Um, obviously, we had hoped to. Um, both fencers actually compete in two weapons, Saber and Epe. 
um, and they really could have gone either way once they got to college. But Sabre is their first love, and um, certainly we want the people to be happy. Veteran fencing coach Ron Miller's on the other side of the mic this week. Coach, 42 years, 1,210 combined wins between your men and women, 13 All-Americas, two Olympians, and you've been chosen National Coach of the Year on two different occasions. Have you had anything that was perhaps your greatest satisfaction in the midst of all of, that, uh, of those accomplishments? I think the one thing that sticks out in my mind was a victory we had several years ago. Um, we've had, you know, a, a dependence on walk-on athletes over all the years we've right, been here. Right. Uh, but certainly in that year, our entire women's team was made up of walk-ons. Um, we beat the national champions, Penn State, at their home uh, late mm -hmm. in the season. Uh, we had lost to them earlier in the year, um, and then we came back and uh, picked up the difference in the bouts and, and won at their house. So that was fun. Coach, two more of your fencers were among five student athletes at Carolina to be inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. Pittsburgh senior Mary Bargo is working towards a double major in English and comparative literature. She is, and she did a, an honors thesis, which also um, involved fencing. Oh, really? So um, she's uh, quite a young lady. She works very hard and uh, takes her academics exceptionally seriously. Tell me about John Powell, another senior. He's from New Haven, Connecticut, majoring in English with a minor in Arabic. And he's uh, an officer in the ROTC. Um, he'll be going to uh, Officer Candidate School once he, once he leaves. A um, couple semesters, he had a 4.0. Uh, in fact, right. I can only think of one A minus he got all the way through college. Um, very, very bright young man, an excellent, excellent fencer. Most people don't know, but his father was an assistant coach here a number of years ago. Oh, is that right? His father started the reading program at the Annex, uh, Phillips Annex, right. uh, a number of years ago when he was an English grad student. And coach, you have two other fencers who certainly need to be mentioned because they've been recipients of some prestigious academic honor. Uh, yes, Mary Mbuluka, who's a Moorhead scholar, um, is studying in Southeast Asia this summer and collecting data in a number of countries uh, mm. for an honors thesis. Oh, my goodness. And the other one, Hannah Thurman? Hannah Thurman uh, is in China. So she, had a recip she was a recipient of another scholarship that allowed her to go there this summer and study. Miriam will be back in the fall, and actually so will Hannah. Well, I will say this, that uh, I think out of the fencing matches, <laughs> you've had some rather interesting people to deal with through your career. Very, very true. In fact, um, some years we've had up to 10 or 12 more heads in a given year. Uh, lately, it's only been four. <laughs> but uh, So the numbers have gone down a little. But... Um, but yeah, we really have. My special guest this week has been Ron Miller, who will serve his 43rd season as the Carolina fencing coach during the 2009-10 academic year. Coach of the 45 fencers on your roster, 12 were seniors and another a graduate student. So how do you feel about the prospects for the coming season? It um, looks like it's going to be a good year. Um, we were decimated by graduation. Uh, really, we had 16 seniors graduate, and many of those were starters. So we have about half of our starting lineup to fill. Uh, we did get some excellent recruits, especially in men's foil. Uh, we got an amazing gift. We have a young man from France who's coming as an exchange student for one year in men's epee. Um, and on the women's side, we picked up three excellent women as well. So um, some of our needs definitely will be, uh, will be met that way. Uh, but we have a number of developing fencers that have been on the team for a year or so, and then we're looking for a strong tryout as always. Overall, do you have a finger right now on how many incoming prospects you'd like to have on the team? Um, we, we're looking, we have about 32 to 34 returners, uh, six to eight uh, recruits, what we know about, and we would probably need another 12 to 15 walk-ons. There will be more after you listen to this local information. Last year's schedule, Coach, took your Tar Heels to Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Illinois. What kind of slate have you laid out for this coming season? Pretty much the same, uh, except we'll probably be going back to Boston and uh, spending a, a fair amount of time in Philadelphia and in State College. Hmm. That's a lot of time on the bus. <laughs> it, it is a lot of time on the bus. Um, but one of our families gave us a nice gift um, to try to help us to fly for at least one or two of the competitions. Coach, we spent a good deal of time yesterday talking about the outstanding academic program that you have associated with Carolina Fencing. But I know you're awfully proud of a an award that came to you this year from the Atlantic Coast Conference. It was the Sportsmanship Award for fencing. That's true. Um, a little bit of a surprise, but a nice one. Um, our, our team fenced very well this year at the MACFA Championships, as we discussed earlier, uh, with an overall victory. Um, in one of the weapons, in Sabre, um, we were actually tied with Stevens 
um, another strong school from the New Jersey area. Um, it turned out that earlier in the day there was an error in scoring, uh, which could not be corrected because both the athletes and officials had signed it. Um, so even though we, we won on the difference in touches scored, um, there was really one bout in error. So following the award ceremony and the competition, um, our team elected to give our first place trophy to Stevens and trade it for the second place. And an actual exchange of medals? Yes, actual exchange of medals. Um, and it was something that we discussed uh, with our own team uh, after verifying the results. Um, it was something they all wanted to do. Inside Carolina Athletics has been brought to you by Bojangles. Bojangles, proud to support Tar Heel Athletics.